Okay. This is the Selectman's meeting for October 29th, 2009. First order of business. Salute to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is approval of agenda. I make a motion we approve the agenda is written. Actually, may I add an item to the agenda, please? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gannon has asked to speak prior to our discussion of... Oh, 13. Yes, B. 3B. <coughs> Okay. So, or as part um, of our discussion. Well, he can. It, it, it he can speak, he can under, speak the under the, oh, under the 13th. The That'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, during the 13th Street uh, conversation. Okay. So I need a motion. I gave a Second. motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Approval of the minutes of last meeting. I make a motion we approve of the minutes of the last meeting as written. Second. All in favor? Signing of the warrants. I have not read them. I have not been in as we definitely have. So. Okay. The school's one is here this week. Two. You can read them and sign them later if you want. I mean, no, I'll sign, I'll sign them. I'll read them in the. Oh, sign them later. Yes. As long as there's two of us, yep. doesn't matter. You would sign those two already. This one, yeah. Okay. Okay. No. No. I trust. Cable committee update. Do we have a cable committee update from anyone? No. No cup update. Okay. So the cable committee's done nothing for the last week. <laughs> I know that would get you up. Um, this week we experienced a lot of um, technical problems in the studio, but we've worked through them. And um, I guess the only thing that we're talking about right now is just clarifying some of the policies um, to make it more clear to people as to what they need to do to get a video produced and put on the air. Um, I'm swamped in the studio right now and I'm going to have to start having people produce their own video as it's supposed to be. I've been doing it just as like a favor and I'm really enabling them. So people are gonna have to get involved if they want something on the air, if they wanna film something, they're gonna have to come in and I'll show them how to edit it and I'll be in there with them while they're doing it. But um, just kind of getting more participation. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Lopez. I applaud the cable committee's uh, hard work and diligence to everything that they've done. I know the amount of hard work they have gone through. Uh, although the other day I was looking at Channel 26 and came upon one of the meetings that we had. And uh, I know that before there had been talk about putting on the bottom up there as far as the date of the meeting and that type of situation. I was just wondering if that was going to be happening. Would that be easiest to do, like Waterboro, they put a calendar on the desk that's just in front of the select. Are you talking about the date on the video? Yeah. Well, like, well, we every came in video that oh, goes on at the beginning, it's on there. Um, but you were wanting it at the bottom of the screen throughout the whole video. Yeah, because we came in halfway through it and we didn't know what meeting it was and you know, what date and time. So I, maybe that might be helpful. Mm, I can look at it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Low tech, easy. We do announce it, you know, every time, at least hours, but then if you're in the middle of it, you don't know, you didn't hear that, so, okay. Road committee update. No update, the road committee did nothing. Okay. After you came and asked me, where was she? You asked me to put it on. I know. <laughs> okay. Now we're, um... <laughs> Third item under old businesses discussing in 13th Street. We had a discussion about 13th Street last week, and Larissa wasn't here, so we didn't want to take a vote on that last week. Um, so I open up that discussion again. Um, 
basically my opinion was that I felt we should, the town should plow that section of 13th Street up to Cove Wood. That was pretty much my, my opinion and, and my vote. And uh, Larissa didn't get a chance to speak about that, if you would like to. Um, I would be happy to give the floor to Mr. Gannon first, or I can give my opinion first, whichever you prefer, Mr. Gannon. Is there a, uh, yeah, come on up, Mr. Gannon. Just so that I can speak. I was unable to come last week because you probably noticed. Yes. But I sent my love to the which is certainly better than it could have so Jack, you know, she could have painted really your portrait to take with her. She could have done any kind of artwork that would love to sell it. Um, you know, bless you. Um, I, I know readjust you yourself. How do you want me to adjust myself? So that you're heard. Oh, I, I just want you to be heard. Oh, okay. Um, the map of 13th Street that I have here comes from the Fairgrounds Inn, and it, and it shows where Homewood is. It's one mile in. It doesn't completely show the very end of. 13th Street, which is at where the water between Hubbard Cove and the main lake comes, which is a half a mile past Covewood. What's been going on with 13th Street for years was that Covewood Drive is the only public road in the entire state of Maine that is not reached by any other public road. The only way to reach it is to drive over a private road to Covewood. Previously, before the law was changed, um, we were unable to get so that Covewood could be uh, helped in any way by the main road. The way the law reads, we formed a road association and all the avenues off of 13th Street, all the residents of 13th and Covewood have to pay dues to that association because the law says they can use the road. Even though it's a public road, they pay your taxes plus they pay dues to the 13th Street Road Association. Um, and that's gone on until this law was changed and allows you guys to come to the road and come across our road now. Um, so that's just a little history of it. I wanted to say that last week. Um, and then I want to just kind of blow everybody's horn that's on 13th Street for just a minute, if you just bear with me, um, and tell you what we've done so everybody knows. The road, and pardon me, I'm not good at being on camera. Um, it's approximately a mile and a half long. It's one mile into Covewood and a half mile past. The road associations now have three complete years and we're starting our fourth with all the avenues and COVID members and being assessed. The dues that we've collected in the first three years are over $100,000. 473 of 486 ass of assessments, 473 of 486 assessments have been collected. 97.3% of the dues have been paid. Avenues A, B, E, F, G, H, and the residents past Covewood are 100% paid up. It's just a phenomenal success story for a town to, to hear that the whole town got together. Donations to pave the road have been made in excess of $30,000 above these dues by the residents, which, for which they really have done a great job. In the first three years, over one mile of this road's been paved. <coughs> the road's a mile and a half long. 3,050 3, feet were paved by the association, including some of the donations and the dues. 306 feet were paved by Scott McLeod and the Avenue A people. And 2,095 feet were paved by the donations of the people who live past COVID, that are past where you would snow plow too. Um, the McLeod and road paving by those people past have saved many dollars in maintenance, so we got a lot to be proud of. All you guys got to be, that are here, you just got, you've done a great job. Um, we have approximately approximately 2,469 feet left to pay, less than half a mile. It's a tremendous success story for a small town in three years that the residents got together and really worked hard to take care of their road. Um, and in the state, I don't think there's been a better success story in any, any major private road. There's 162 great people that have done a great team effort. And all the people that are here on 13th Street, I just want to applaud you. We also have been very fortunate in using Dave Winchell to do our work. Um, on the road, and he's done a great job for us, and I want to thank him. And that's all I wanted to say. I didn't get a chance to say it last week, and uh, Mary's too quiet. Thanks, guys. Thank Any you. questions, I'll gladly take them. Okay, thank okay. you. Thanks very much for yielding to me. Of course. Okay. Marissa, you want to give your opinion? Um, so my opinion is um, uncertain. I recognize the complete inefficiency of picking up our plow to travel a mile to drop it again. 
I recognize the perhaps foolhardiness that is represented by having a townway that we are responsible for locked by private land that we have no responsibilities to or for, and that from a liability point of view, if there is an emergency on Covewood Drive that we are responsible for getting to and we cannot because 12th, uh, 13th Street is blocked, that that poses a problem. However, I am also very loath to have our board of three make decisions that really should be made at town meeting and that town meeting has already voted on, in my opinion, from what I've read about past warrants. And so this is what I would like to do. I would like to get, and I know that this is going to perhaps be unpopular, but I would like to get a legal opinion as to what we have the right legally to do. Do we as a board have the right to make a decision about whether the town is going to maintain a road that is not a town way? That is my first question. Is that, does it make sense? Absolutely it makes sense. But is it legal? That's one of our jobs, is to make sure that what we do is legal. So that would be the first thing I would want to find out, is if it actually is even legal for us to say, go ahead. I know that the new legislation that passed said that in emergency situations we can, without fear of liability, but this isn't an emergency situation. This is whenever the road is, whenever it snows and the plows are on the road, that the road is plowed. So that is one thing that I would be interested in finding out. And, um, and the other is really to find out how, how should this work properly? Can we, w will 13th Street be ready to go before the town this coming June? Is it going to need another year? Can we go before the town this coming June and ask them for permission next winter to take care of this with the good faith that 13th Street is working hard at becoming up to town standards and will be coming before the town to be accepted in the near future. Um, so that's where I stand, is that I, I understand. It makes no sense to pick up that plow, drive a mile, and drop the plow again. I recognize that that's just foolish. And yet, very often, we do foolish things because they are legal to be done. So that's my stance. I'd like to find out a legal opinion first. Mr. Long? You go ahead. I, I pretty much made up my mind already, so. See, I, again, if I, I'll just put a little more into my, my decision. This is, again, as Mr. Gannon said, the only situation like this in the state of Maine. And whoever this, years ago, I don't know how many years ago this was done, selectmen were involved in it, selectmen made a mistake. They allowed this to happen, the selectmen should fix it right now. And I think we have the right to fix it and I don't know if anybody's going to take us to court or if they want to take us to court and challenge it. It's ridiculous. And we're not maintaining it. We're only going to plow it. It wasn't right decided now. by selectmen, I don't believe. I believe that, you mean as far as not well, plowing the, 13th the, the, Street? The, 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 even though Covewood might, might have been voted in by the, the, town. the town, the mm -hmm. selectmen should never have put that on a warrant allowing that to happen when there was a private road connected to a selectman had, had a decision in it. Whoever it was, and I mean, it's, no, it's, it's a long time ago. It was 36 years ago. Right, it's so we can correct that. And I don't, it, it, my problem is if it goes be, before a town meeting and they vote no, then what? I, don't, I think that's wrong. I think if the selectman can make the decision that we should allow our citizens of Cove Wood Drive access to a public way. Mr. Winchell. Well, I was coming to the correct, um, Larissa. I don't believe they voted. What, what they voted on last time on 13th Street was to take it over as a town road. That's not, that was to accept it as a town road, okay? This isn't, from what I get out of this, we're not taking this as a town road. All they're talking about is wintertime maintenance. Now, I've been trying to stay out of this as much as I can because I'm on both sides of the fence here, okay? I got a contract with 13th Street. I pl I've been plowing for the last three, four years, whatever, okay? And then I'd also be plowing it for the town anyways if you de de decided to do it. Um, I don't care which way, any way or the other, okay? But it, it is silly. When we're out plowing that road under contract, okay, and a town truck comes through with its plow up, okay, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, this is... A situation where this is, hasn't happened in Maine before. Now, those people on COVID who are paying taxes plus paying their their dues, they're getting a really bum deal out of this. And now, those people have to pay dues on 13th Street because they use it. We're using 13th Street also to get to that road. So, you know, I don't see uh, the town acting. You know, 
it's not not like it's going to cost the town act and a substantial amount of money we're going up and down that road anyways um it's not going to increase my budget drastically yeah mr Winchell, that's a good point you have any idea give us a figure ballpark what it will cost us to do this mile extra just put that in perspective well you need to remember like you said though david that we are paying the road commission to drive the road anyway yes so what you'll be talking about is the difference between driving the road and plowing the road amount of time well you've driven down 13th street okay you can drive down a little bit Faster than you used to be able to, but yeah. um, you're driving at a snow snow plow speed, anyways. Either way, it's not going to make a difference. Um, you know that road there. We we use roughly about four yards of sand. That's go to all the way to the other end each time we sand it. Um, per storm, you know, you, it'd be between four and eight yards of sand to do the whole thing now. That's going all the way to the other end, which, you, you know, we're not talking about going on the other end. We're talking about plowing to cold, to cold wood. Now, um, so to cold wood is about two thirds of the way, the length of the road. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's, it's not going to be a, a large cost in the town of Acton. It's not going to be a huge hit. Uh, I'm shooting myself in the foot. I got a contract with these guys. Okay. But, you know, you got to have a little bit of a conscience, too. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, I don't, these people aren't asking to take it over right now as a town road. They're asking for wintertime maintenance. And that we ought to at least give them something, you know, for the use to go to Coldwood Drive. And remember one thing. We're not, and, and, and don't take this the wrong way, 13th Street people. We're not doing it for 13th Street. We're doing it for Coldwood. Yes. Okay. Nothing against the 13. Nothing against 13th Street. People. That and that's what I meant, anyways. Is yeah, cold. That's you know we're doing it for Coldwood, and that's what we're doing it. Thank you, Mr. Winchell. Kim. I'd like to make a correction. Um, when Larissa was talking, the people of Acton did not vote not to plow. I understand that. Okay. But they, it didn't, was, they voted to accept Covewood. They did not vote to accept 13th Street leading to Covewood. It's a mess. I don't think 13th Street was even proposed to be accepted no, back in 1979. I think, you know, Covewood. for some reason, Covewood was on the agenda, and, and they overlooked the fact that they had to drive a, a private road to get to um, Covewood. Yeah, it's, it's a very short article. It is to see yeah. if the town will vote to accept approximately three-tenths of a mile of road at Hubbard's Cove. The Valley Development, 13th Street. This is a 50-foot road with a turnaround and was tarred in 1973. And that is the 1974 town warrant. So right. it, it is. It's a mess. And it had nothing to do with 13th Street. So, But that is, that is where I am concerned legally, is that we decide what the town will maintain as a road at town meeting. Okay. That is how we're set up to deal with it. So my concern is, and I agree wholeheartedly, it is... It makes no sense. It, it, it goes against every logical fiber in my body to pick up a plow to drive over to drop it again. I, also rec I agree also that it is not even safe for the people that live on Covewood to not, although I'm not saying that Mr. Winchell is not you know, going to take care of 13th Street, but from a town's perspective, if the town is taking care of Covewood Drive, then yes, there is some concern about not being able to necessarily get to that road quickly with our ambulance or a fire. I understand all of this. My question is only to make sure that we are not committing a wrong in trying to fix what was a potential wrong in the past. Okay, now, okay, so let's stop right there. Let me ask you this. Let's go back to um, even the wording of the law, the Title 23, subsection 3105, um, prior to the new rulings that came out in September, all right? And I stated this at the last meeting, the selectmen have always had this at their disposal. Shapley chose to use it. If you get easements from all of those along 13th Street to be able for the town to transverse that road, you do not need the vote of the people. The selectmen may make that choice. To traverse the road, but to plow the road? To plow the road. Shapley's doing it. They've been doing it since 2006. They went around to all their 
people who, live, uh, who are living on private roads and got easements and continued to plow all their private roads. And, and Acton could have chosen at the same time to do the same thing. Shapley's argument was, we want to take care of our taxpayers. <laughs> People who live on private roads around the bodies of water are paying the highest taxes in our town. We want to take care of them. And that's what they chose to do. Acton could have done the same thing. But the choice back in 2006 was no. But it's always been there. So there's nothing illegal about it. All you need to do is get the easements which allows you to go in and do it. Which does lead us to the next question then. If, if we say that we do this for 13th Street, what is to prevent Loop Road or 7th Street? Loop Road does not have the problem that 13th Street has. You, Loop the Road, two. there is no town road off loop road. I agree, road. but if, there, if what you're saying that Shapley has done is simply by getting easements from all the property owners, they now plow the roads. If Acton uses that as justification for doing 13th Street, then Acton would be in question for not doing so for the other roads as well. I, I don't agree with that because this is unique, very unique. And I, I ask this, I, I ask this, can, do we, do we still missing one, that, that, that one, uh, so can that person, let's just use that person, can they come and say, listen, I'm blocking the road and Acton trucks cannot go by here to Plow Cove Road because it's private. I don't agree with the truck going over my little strip of ownership of this land and I'm stopping you. They can't stop us. No. So it's correct. We have to remedy this unique situation. We don't need the useless of the new law. I understand that. I mean, yes, that's to right. The whole change in the law, what the change in the law did was prior to the change in the law, the reason this didn't pass the selectman before was because of the can't use public funds and private roads doctrine. The new law exactly. eliminates that thing. Now you can legally go and get to your road. We'll clearly, you can ask the 13, you can traverse the road. We're simply asking you to plow the code that we think it's right and fair for code. We're not asking for anything else. We don't need any easements. Bill, didn't you say, though, uh, whenever it was, a month or so ago, when you came to the office, uh, that this last person was willing to give one for plowing? At the time that I talked to that person, my understanding was that he'd be willing to give you one for snow plowing to allow the plows to right. come over. Right. I mean, I can't, I don't have it in writing, but yeah. that's what I heard. Um, and now that's kind of going to be up to him and you to work, if you want an easement, for you to, what the wording would be, because... He still doesn't, to my understanding, I shouldn't speak for him, he's not here enough, but, uh, to my understanding, he doesn't want to give a total easement that would allow the road to be taken over by the town in total. But he'd be, your understanding is he'd be willing to give us an easement uh, to plow? I think it depends on the wording and how you did it, because he wants to make sure that it doesn't become a town road. So I, I can't speak for him. But, okay, uh, let me speak, know, I mean, let me speak about, it. let me speak about everybody else then. Sure. Uh, would everybody else that's on 13th Street be willing to uh, sign the 50-foot easement They're to the town? We have them all. They have them all. all we, we have them all. We had them all along, except for one. Okay. Um, we don't have them, do we? No. no, no we, we have we, 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 had, we, we went through this with them every different. step of the way and tried to help them with this in, in the past, and um, they, they have them. We haven't so. turned them in because if we didn't have a mall and you weren't going to take the road, there was no sense obligating their right. residents. Right. Right. Is the intent on 13th Street from an issue that you're here in the meeting this year to come for the town in the next couple of years? We Is that what? Unless we get all the easements. All we've asked is that since you have to go over a road to plow code, It's a very logical you, request. There is no uh, misunderstanding here the on the logic. Was, if the law that's now in place was in place two and a half years ago, that would have happened. Two and a half years ago. We have any more comments, please? Would you come up to the microphone? Make I'm it, sorry. That's okay. Uh, if you would like to come up to the microphone, it makes it easier for the cable people. Thank you. Again, we're not really looking for maintenance, just plowing. You know, we'll take care of the summer maintenance, the patching, the culverts, whatever, but we're just looking for the plowing. 
And again, I still think it's the right thing to do. And what you guys have done on that road is, is inspirational, if you want to put it that way. Have you seen it today? No, I haven't. I'm, I'm going to oh, drive. Wow. I'm going okay. to drive down it because I haven't driven down in a long time. Amazing. So I have to drive and see. Yes, Mr. Lopez. I have always felt that any citizen that lives in any town that pays taxes for services and does not get the services that everyone else is getting, even though they're paying the same taxes, in an abomination, abomination. I would challenge the selectmen to change this ruling, not only for 13th Street, but for other private roads. All right. Uh, I understand what the risk is coming from is if you set a precedence for one, then you're going to get other people to come up forward to that. Everyone within the town pays taxes. Right. I don't know what's going on with uh, going through Buzzle up at the Lakeshore Drive, whatever the case may be. All these people are, they have Lake property, pay their taxes, 75% of what pays this town, okay, the finances of this town. So I understand what you're saying. Beware of, if you're going to do it for one, not to be ready to do it for the others, because they all pay their taxes. Uh, in today's day and time where I feel that government is trying to take over so much, okay, and hopefully we'll never get to the point that New York is that they pay 63% of their paycheck to taxes and don't get the services, okay? I ask and I challenge these selectmen to allow that to happen because these people are paying their taxes, okay? So whatever it takes from whatever standpoint of it, it is, give them a choice then. If you're not going to do it, then don't let them pay taxes. How's that going to go? That's not going to happen then why not help these people out by providing the services that are required? You know, everybody has to drive there. There, there are people that live in these roads, private roads, and they should get the services. Thank you. I'll go this far to say on that note that any other private road that has a town road connected to it, we will plow that private road to that town road also. So we'll be the same as this. How's that? What is your I, uh, wait a minute now, I listen to everybody. I wanted to wait and listen to everybody. All right. All right? I gave my spiel last week, and uh, I asked, for those of you who weren't here, I asked uh, Virginia Grover to give her opinion on what I said. And, uh, and she knows my feelings about the private roads. Uh, I've been very boisterous about it over the years. And she said that uh, there was a mistake made. Uh, there's been a lot of mistakes made over the years, and uh, I've probably made quite a few even since I've been in Selectman. But uh, the bottom line is uh, things that are wrong, uh, you have to start somewhere to fix them. And uh, she's 100% right when she said that. And uh, so I guess that says where I'm Stand on it. Any further comments? I will entertain a motion. I make a motion that we um, agree uh, with the 13th Street uh, Road Association um, with the request that we have the winter uh, plowing easements. Uh, in our office uh, that we uh, plow and sand uh, from 109 to Coldwood. Now, before we do this, what if we, if for some reason they cannot get this one easement on winter plow? Then, then, then uh, you know. I, I think they I, have I, it. I, no. They don't have it. He said they might give it, but I don't think it should be contingent on that easement. I think we can do it without that easement. No problem all day long. No, we can, but I still think it's a fair, <coughs> I still think it's fair to ask. But I wouldn't think, I don't know if it should be in the motion, though, because then it's restrictive to getting that. You see? And if they don't get it, then we, 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 we're not doing what we want to do. Isn't the law of the land the majority rule? In the, well, it used to be, right? In easement cases. Well, we used to be. I still live in America. 
<laughs> in the easement case, right, well. sometimes in easement case it doesn't work that way. But so I don't know. I, I'm wondering if we could restructure that motion. Well, um, okay, I, I will. Let's, let's hear Mr. Cash. Mr. Cash can come up and help us with. This. I just had a good question. Um, it seems that that you're you're obligating the town to for a financial, an additional financial burden here. This is going to be plowed at whose expense? It, it, the, the added expense is very minimal uh, okay. because the town travels the road anyway to get to Coldwood. Okay. And the rate of speed that uh, they, would plow, they would drive or plow wouldn't be that much difference. So we're paying the trucks to go in and out over that road regardless. It would right. be very minimal. I, I would just wonder about the precedent and the usurping of the role of town meeting in this decision. That's, that would be my concern, I guess. If the expense on the, in this particular case is of no um, issue, um, I think you, you are kind of setting a precedent here. So, okay, thank you. Okay, I, I would I would change my motion that we plow and sand coal wood. I mean. Um, 13th Street from 109 to Coldwood, um, starting this this year. Um, and this isn't part of my motion, but I want to say this. I would still ask that um, people try to, in good faith, get us as many easements as you possibly can give us. That's, that's just on a loose side thing there. Okay, so, so the motion on the table is that we, uh, the motion is to plow 13th Street up to Coldwood and sand 13th Street up to Coldwood beginning immediately. I'd wait till this all is gone. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Otherwise, Tom would be right. At the be first right snowstorm. All right. Okay. I will second, and then I'd like to open the discussion of the motion on the table. Okay. The motion has been seconded. Open for discussion. It is logical. It makes good sense. However, I just want to go on record. It is potentially financially, as a town, going to be difficult. If it's going to be hard, I think, to make a separation between 13th Street and the other private roads. I, I, but it does make sense. I understand that. I just want us to be aware that we are going in a direction that, we, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't plow private roads. I'm just saying that we need, to go, we need to go into this with our eyes open and understanding that we may be opening that conversation in a whole new way. I agree. Okay, motion is on the table. It's been seconded, all in favor. <laughs> motion passes. And, and now that this is over, um, I will say, going on record, uh, that <coughs> my intention is, uh, however it ends up in the newspapers or wherever, uh, this was a thing that was done wrong to the people on the private roads, not just 13th Street. Uh, all the private roads that we were spending money on, all the private roads that we were plowing and sanding, and to me it was an injustice to all the citizens of Acton, and uh, opening up um, a can of worms or whatever you want to call it for the future, uh, I welcome that. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Cashin. Can you wait till we get to the can of worms section? <laughs> well, we'll add the can of worms at the end. We always do. For you, of course. Okay, under new business, the amendment to a personnel policy. We had talked about this, I think, another time, but we never really voted on it. Right. We've amended the personnel policy uh, to add flexible time. Would you want to just give that a synopsis? Sure. All right. um, our Personnel policy previously read that our employees were granted one day of sick time per month that they worked. 
um, and that that sick time was to accrue starting July 1, and it was never to be carried over. And so what would happen each year is that as of July 1, each of the beginning of each fiscal year, none of our employees had any sick leave. They had to wait to <clears throat> um, earn that time again as the months went on. And it was a little bit foolish. So I also felt that where there, um, they also had no opportunity for personal time off. There was sick time and there was vacation time. And so I approached the board and I approached the employees about shifting our personnel policy to read flexible time off instead of sick time or sick leave. So the same number of days are the same. They accrue one day per month employed. For our long-term part-time employees, they accrue one half day per month employed. And they do not have to disclose what they are using that time for. It is personal time. They can do it w with it what they wish. Um, and is there anything else? Oh, and it accrues quarterly now instead of monthly. So they are granted three days at the beginning of each quarter so that the problem with having no leave time as of July 1 is taken care of. So uh, July 1st, they receive three days. They receive another three days on October 1st and so on. And yet it, it still cannot be carried on to the next year. It is, um, and it is still to be recorded and um, you're only allowed to have those 12 days. I want to chain a motion. Oh, we have a comment. I Mr. Lopez. Have a yes, sir. Please come up to the podium, Mr. Lopez. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Now you said it's a day per month for full-time employees and a half a day. For, for long time. For long time. Part-time employees. Part -time long term part-time part employees. Okay. Is this something that is being done in the public sector? You mean in the end, and well, public uh, companies, private sector, you're looking at <laughs> You know, if I don't use my sick time or whatever the case may be, by the end of the year, boom, you lose it. That's what we're so doing do we. here, right? Okay, but now you're, you're talking about uh, it come July 1st, they're automatically getting three days. Because, That's to start the year Because out, of the time that they've already put in? No. no. It's because instead of accruing one day per month, you receive three days per quarter, and you get them at the beginning of the quarter. So if you fall ill on July 2nd, in the previous policy, you had no sick leave to use. So at this, this way, you have three days that you may use. You don't get another three days until October 1. So you, you're still getting one day per month. It's just that you are getting them in a lump. Okay, and no. instead of giving them as a yearly lump, because we didn't, there needed to be a balance between we're not going to grant you 12 personal days on July 1 and have you use them all by August one and then leave our employment. Okay, that I guess, I guess my question stems from the point I, if July 1st comes around and you get sick and you take your three days off with, and no questions asked, whatever the case may be, and then you get fired on July 18th, do you have to pay that money back that you've taken those three days? No, it is a risk we are taking. Mm -hmm, that doesn't seem right to me. I think it's in keeping with the private sector as a whole. I don't think so. I can only speak from the private sector from my own company. I run Burger King restaurants, and we're not generally giant givers of time off um, of that nature. But what we do with our days off is they get them quarterly, as you say. They can have them on the first, and they're actually carried over, and we don't erase them. So they actually have days from 2005 left. We, let, we don't ever take them away from them. So they may have accumulated a number of days. And most everybody I know that gives sick days, they allow them <coughs> to accumulate previous years still. Um, and the minute that that quarter starts, they can have the day. Because otherwise, they couldn't take it till the end of the quarter, and they lose the whole quarter. So that's the reason that we do it in our, our part of the public business. And we're considered cheap because we pay low wages. Uh, just, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that in camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this, I don't know if that helps you, but that is how it's done yeah. everywhere I've yeah. seen. This is more restrictive than uh, the, uh, the other school department, for example, because just like Bill says, they're allowed to accumulate their days. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're not going to allow that, so we're being a lot tighter than uh, some people are. It was also inspired in part because our vacation policy reads that they are to take their vacation in one week and two week blocks. 
So it didn't leave our employees a lot of flexibility if they simply wanted to take off a Wednesday for whatever their business. And I also felt it was important to be respectful of the fact that these are adults that have personal business that is not of our concern and that if we are going to entrust them with jobs that are as important as a treasurer or a town clerk and tax collector that we probably can also trust them to use their time off in their own way without our concern. So I thought it was a respectful policy to enact. We have a motion. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that we uh, accept the revised Thanks. personnel policy. Second. All in favor? Okay. As you can see in front of Larissa, our policy uh, manual is getting thicker and thicker. There we are. Now we really do have it. Okay. Number two is establishing holiday dates for closed offices for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And we go through this every year because of the way that they lie and in the week and so forth and so on. So the request from everybody in general is that we're closed on November 26th and 27th. So the 26th would be Thanksgiving Day and the 27th would be the Friday after it and open on Saturday, November 28th. That's very nice to be open on Saturday. Closed December. It's the last Saturday Don't of start the month, Tony. Huh? <laughs> I just said it's very nice that they offered that. They could have asked for that extra, you know, I think they probably did. Closed. Uh, they probably, that's one. They that's probably one. did. You're let's right. Do, let's do this one. Let's do them all at once. And then the other one is closed December 24th, which is Christmas Eve. Closed the 25th and 26th, but also closed December 31st and January 1st. Open January 2nd. Because Christmas and New Year's, as always, fall on the same day of the week, which this year happens to be Thursday, uh, Friday rather. So Thursday night being our normal evening meeting and office hours. No one wishes to be here Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. No one, of course, wishes to be here on a Friday, on a holiday. And the Saturday following seems a bit um, harsh as well for right after Christmas. So we thought that that was reasonable. It also moves our meeting nights to the Tuesdays yeah, of those weeks. Two weeks in a row. All the original thing, I had it written down. I didn't get it written down here. But on those two, two weeks that will be closed on, uh, uh, we're closed on Thursday, the meetings, selectman meetings, will be Tuesday night instead. Yeah, all three weeks, Lorraine. I all, all three weeks. Oh, yeah. there, oh for we're going to the only Saturday we did ask for the Saturday of Christmas <laughs> off. That's a normal open day, but we asked that we be closed. That that we have those three days for Christmas. Okay. And I have to and say that let's hear from the Grinch, please. Th there was only one selectman that uh, disagreed, and. Uh, People can have three guesses on which one it was. <laughs> the one that can use the eggnog. Um, I also lobbied for having the 17th um, be shifted to the 15th in honor of my birthday, but no one agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be here on the 17th, but I will be a bit miserable about it. I, I think this is fine. Do you, uh, yeah. Yes, of okay. course, absolutely. Wrench. It was quite a conversation, yeah. but... Uh, <laughs> I want a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion we accept the holiday schedule as established. Uh, second. All in favor? Uh, and I will include in the minutes the selectmen's meetings being yes. the Tuesday night. Would this be a good time to discuss shifting our workshop day? Wait a minute. Just before we do, if I could, Larissa, uh, you would pass this on to. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, Jenna, yeah, the Jennifer Rue to put this on to the uh, right. website and on the She's already told TV. me to give it to her and she'd put it on. And the TV. Yep. Channel 26. She doesn't have Carol do it. It's like, no, it's not Carol's job. You want to I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I do. You want to discuss about, about the Shifting situation? Our, yep. Yeah, normally we, we have our, our Thursdays, of course, we have our meeting and then Fridays we have an additional time that we note because we have to that we're all here. 
So it's kind of, it has to be noted and, put and posted. And we're considering, we haven't made a full decision about this yet, moving it because we come in, we're all here Thursday, Friday for sure. Other people will pop in here and there during the week. But um, the consensus was to go to Tuesday and, and instead of Friday. Um, I can't make that decision yet personally. Okay. I would have read ahead Wednesday, but you can't. Wednesday's bad for you. Wednesday cannot. So and I it also doesn't solve the problem of not having two days back to back. That the idea right. was to have a touch point. Right. If you're a citizen and you have a concern, Friday afternoon at two, we are not legally able to discuss that and address it until our next meeting time, which is not until Thursday <coughs> evening. So by shifting and having our legally posted workshop schedule, if you will, on Tuesday morning, we have two places of contact with one another, with all three of us rather, that we can deal with issues as they come forward. So things that come up on a Friday and Saturday, we can deal with them Tuesday instead of holding them till the Thursday night. So I just need a little more time to work this out because of my work schedule. I can't make it. Now what will you, on the workshop days, if we're going to have those on Tuesday, what time? Normally like we are, we come in in the morning. Well, we've been having them at 11. You know? No, I mean, this is the time we... No, we, we usually we, here by 9 on Friday. We go like 9 to 12 or 9 to 1. We, we note that, at, you know, that we're here on Fridays 9 to 12. We have been doing our staff during our noon hour. Oh, staff no, meetings no, are not, different. We're, we're not, not talking, talking about staff, staff No, meeting. we're talking about our normal weekly... The normal for you folks to be in. Right. Yes. Okay, how about the staff meeting? Because the staff meeting... Right. Both we could November shift that, and December. We could shift that to the Tuesday as well, which will make... Our town clerk, tax so collector, and want treasurer have at eleven on Tuesdays. But we haven't made the final decision yet. Yeah, I have to just work some things out with work first. And okay. So we'll leave it at Friday for now okay. until until I can make a decision. Do you have a question, Mr. Luke? No, I, I do actually. Please come up to the podium, Mr. Luke. So as I said, November and December, we won't be in on Friday. For the citizens that have a concern. And they can't make the workshop from 9 to 11 or 11 to whatever time it is uh, because, you know, they have to work. Is there, would the selectmen uh, consider a motion of have, uh, having alternating workshops to have some later times so that citizens who do have to work would be able to come in also to address some issues? That would be Thursday evening. I mean, that Before the meeting? Yep. Before we see people after. very often before the meeting. Before or after. And also we do get, you know, do get together in, on times that are needed. So there's times that we're in here every night of the week at different times of the year. Um, we're all available by phone and by, you know, um, email. I can't punch you by phone. That's true. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're always working on stuff every day. Okay. You know, I hear from somebody every day. But... Um, if there's a concern, you can't contact one selectman and ask them about it. We just can't discuss it at that meeting between us. Okay. okay. And but you can make an appointment. We're, we're pretty flexible. You know, okay. we've come here Monday nights. And well, I just thought somewhere. workshop was something that was. You know, it's just that we're here, telling everybody we're here. If you want to come in and sit down, we're all here, and we can all discuss it because it's posted. You it's a posted I mean? meeting. Posted media, posted time. So but, we call it the workshop day because it's not. It doesn't have an agenda. It's just whatever is, is before us. Do we have, you know, supplements that need to be signed and discussed? Do we have assessment issues that have come up? Do we have, um, it's when we will meet with the fire chief if we need to, or the road commissioners have come on to speak to us on a Friday morning before. So it just, it's a time that is posted. It just makes it an official time that we, the public knows that we are all together. And the public is always welcome to come and listen to what we're saying. It's an open door and people are, that's a, a time that you know that all of us will be there discussing town business and it's posted publicly so that people are aware of that so that they can come and hear what's being said. Thank you for clarifying the uh, verbiage of workshop. Indeed. Okay, so we'll keep put the table that for now until we come up with a final decision. Okay, Mr. Mooney, would you like to come up and give us a report? Evening, evening. Scott Mooney. I'd just like to say that uh, the special project with the guardrails 450 feet up on Acton Ridge, it's done, and uh, 800 feet on Goose Pond. And I've just about half, half of Goose Pond Road has been ditched, edged, sloped, um, up towards the Shapley's end. Um, I've got into some lot bigger rocks and whatnot, which I hope to, to, uh, to continue all the way to the Shapley end on both sides of the hill, get more drainage and maybe do a little blasting and 
And uh, in the beginning of Goose Pond 109, there's going to be some uh, drainage issues with the house there. And, and just like to continue that road up and just wanted to let you know that that projects were done and they were good people to work with. I recommend working with them again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll open up a can of worms now. <laughs> Time. We should put that on there at the end. We should, and also, we should we'll also mention that at the beginning of the meeting, we discussed that it was going to be a um, fairly shortish meeting because one of our select board members is feeling quite ill. Um, <laughs> I am always brief. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that the select persons and the folks in the audience, uh, if they read their smart shopper this week, um, the uh, edition of the 21st on page 21, let me get that right, October 27, page 21. Uh, Mr. Peterson uh, placed an ad uh, calling to the Acton voters' attention. The ad looks like this. Um, the three uh, articles on the municipal ordinance. Um, I'm hoping that the selectmen and the, some folks in the audience uh, noticed a uh, flagrant error in, in one of Mr. Peterson's statements. And I was also hoping that the selectmen would uh, feel obliged to uh, correct that error by means of a, of a broadsheet or something. Mr. Peterson made a statement uh, after question one, which is the amendment calling for returning the lot sizes to, uh, from their current three acre minimum lot size in the rural district to two acres with a, with a frontage of a change from 300 feet to 250 feet. And he had a statement after that saying, voting no on this question means your original undeveloped two acre lot. I think the key word there is original, which means to me prior to the implementation of the change your original undeveloped two acre lot is devalued because it will be unbuildable. Uh, that is uh, incorrect because those lots would be grandfathered. Anyone with a rudimentary knowledge of zoning and or real estate law, and I think Virginia would probably back me up on this and Kenny Paul also was going to come in and explain this, would understand that the town uh, would be open to an immediate challenge of takings if, if they ever were to follow a policy like that. So um, this is creating a huge uh, misrepresentation of fact, and I would hope that the selectmen could do something to correct it. My, my feelings about it. Were you, uh, excuse me. Were you, was any of you aware uh, that this misrepresentation was in the paper? I haven't read it until you just said it right now. Yes. I read it, Did and then I read it again, and I read it again, that particular statement. It struck you as maybe incorrect? Well, it struck me the first time as what you said yeah. it would be, but then I read it a couple more times, and it says an un under undeveloped two-acre lot, which <coughs> might mean, and it's vague, which might mean lots that haven't been broken off yet that somebody might plan on. You could look at it both ways, I think. Well, but I'm I mean, sure. I don't, you know. Would I, it settle? Would it settle for us to all agree that current lots of record that are two-acre lots of record are not subject to the three-acre minimum lot size in the rural zone? What I think needs to be understood or conveyed is that is that uh, the lots that were in, in existence before June 10. 08 of two acres or up to three acres would be grandfathered. And they would, they, if they were legally recorded with the registry, um, you could indeed build on them. There's no, no penalty would uh, uh, befall you. you know? That is true. So um, this is casting uh, you know, a completely incorrect impression on uh, a bit of ordinance that is being uh, uh, considered by the voters uh, with now uh, an, an erroneous half-page ad floating around um, with no correction. So I'm, I'm hoping 
uh, in the interest of informing correctly the voters, which you, we have all spoken of many times, um, there would be an effort made by the selectman's office maybe to, to uh, uh, correct this impression. I know this was not done uh, maliciously or with intent, but uh, be that as it may, it, it, it creates, uh, you know, it's a mistake that, that uh, a voter might uh, act upon, which is not, not the way to proceed. Thanks for your help. Uh, first of all, voting is this coming Tuesday. Uh, so I don't know, like in a timely frame, if the selectmen chose to uh, put a correction out there, it wouldn't be um, in a newspaper or anything in, in time anyway. No. It, second it, of all, it could merely be me, a. Tom, second of all, uh, if the selectmen addressed everything that was misrepresented or the allegations that were made uh, in the newspaper, <laughs> every week by some person, uh, which is anybody that reads the papers, uh, knows that happens quite often, especially with Mr. Colangiangelo and myself. Uh, we'll spend half our time uh, trying to put information out there uh, that is correct, uh, which we try to do at our meetings, but we have no control over the misrepresentation that anybody wants to put in the newspaper. And I don't think it's a slutman's responsibility to uh, try to fight people's opinions uh, in the newspaper. Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly that when personal attacks are made or, or in that nature, they, they do not warrant a, a rebuttal of any kind. But this is a substantive issue, Dennis, uh, wherein the voters have been misinformed and uh, may act in a way uh, inappropriate to, to uh, the, the proposal because of some misinformation that was, that was publicized. No, so no, I'm, really, I'm, I'm, I'm not really talking about the personal attacks. I'm talking about the misinformation that people choose to well, put in but the that's fine. financial I, information and, and, and things that have happened. It's the same thing, Tom. We've got no control over it. You, it would merely take a, 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 a posted notice in three or four places tomorrow. That would be a good faith effort to correct, correct this false impression. That's all I'm asking. Let me see. Mr. Cashin, yeah. I understand that you're not asking us to put anything in the paper, that you're asking us to post a memo maybe here at the town hall, at the post office, et cetera. Mr. Long is correct. If we as a board make policy to address things in the paper that are misrepresenting what is happening here at the town hall or in town business, it is as you said, certainly falls into the can of worms segment of our evening. I think that it is fair to say, and we have done so at this meeting, that that is not the case. Grandfathered lots of record are not affected by the zoning that was passed last year. They are absolutely buildable lots, and we can correct that as we have with other things at our meeting, and happy to do so and have done so. But I think it is outside of the um, I think it is outside of the scope of this board to start responding to incorrect print. It happens a lot, not just with personal things, but the newspaper themselves get things wrong, and we can certainly ask the newspaper writers to retract at their next issue, but we do not have time. And we have already discussed responding to things in the newspaper that are not personal attacks, but that are actually questioning about what we have done as a town, we dealt with this a couple of months ago, and we decided as a board at that point to not respond publicly outside of this <clears> meeting. <throat> may, I, may I put one thing in, uh, yeah. Carol? When will this meeting, we're, we're taping this meeting tonight, when does this get aired? Is it a set schedule like that? If we're here Thursday, it'll uh, get on on It'll get ready to be aired on Saturday, so it'll go on Saturday evening. And how long, how many times do you And it'll be on play? twice a day. It'll twice be on at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. Okay. Um, every day. So this this meeting, it just as a start, will yeah. be on. I think we, this is how we've decided one of the ways to combat some of this. Mm -hmm. When we talk in our meetings, we've, we're talking openly and factually. And a lot of people have come up now. So this meeting will be aired many, many times before the vote. Yeah. Okay, so that's one good thing for you. 
uh, about you. correcting this in us. It's, it's and whatever, it's whatever, whatever, so that people you. don't misconceive what, for what they're reading. It's good for your it's good for, it's but good I, for but, all know, of our costs. And so, um, just as a little extra, people have come up have come up to me that have read these uh, uh, ridiculous ads in there and have said, "I saw the meeting that you talked about that, and this person must have saw a different meeting than I did because you guys were right exactly clear what you were doing." Many, many people have come up to me and commented because they're watching these meetings. So what you're saying here is noted, and you're correct. There is no, there is grandfathering, and people are watching this, um, and, and, and it will make an effect. As as a as a voter, um, I I humbly disagree with your. Um, uh, there need not be a policy necessary on on corrections. Tom, um, excuse me, but, Tom. You got stuck your brain. Oh, okay. One, one Sorry, second. Tom. TV, uh, second, TV. Uh, just right. Thank you for uh, considering it. I, I may undertake uh, as as a voter to uh, to work up a little. Are you sure? Sheet. Yeah, I, I and I I guess I'm asking for a little more consideration of this uh, request on on its merits. Um, this this was a ballot question which was um, uh, misrepresented. In its, in its. Uh, Have you ever, did you watch the uh, the the exchange of, uh, which happened quite a few months ago when they had the ballot question with Poland Spring and Shapley? No. I, I read I'll, everything. I'll uh, I'll sit down. But no, no, no. Listen, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. <clears throat> I, I read everything. I like reading. I like to know what's going on. It's, it educates us to see what other people are doing. And there was a big uh, exchange between the people who agreed with Poland Spring and the people who didn't. And. Three quarters of that stuff was misinformation. I mean, the, the, you know, it, it was ridiculous. I could see it. I read it. I give the people a little more credit than maybe you do to oh. understand. But listen, uh, what I'm saying. They Tony, know I wish they, you would retract that right now. No, well, I'm just saying. I think the people are reading That's a good statement. I give the people credit. They're reading that, and they're realizing it's grandfathered. The good portion of the people. You think that <clears throat> most of them are going to change their vote because they read that. I really nope. don't. They're a little more intelligent than, than, than anybody might think on how they perceive these votes. I, I, <coughs> I agree. Um, however, for those folks apparently like Mr. Peterson who are misinformed, this will further mislead them and uh, maybe make them uh, uh, act in a way that is not appropriate Maybe, regarding this proposal. And again, he's not here to defend himself, but I don't know if he was more misinformed or just didn't word it the best way. Because I'm okay. sure he knows it's grandfathered. I mean, anybody, in general, everybody would. But anyway, it's, it's noted. It's on okay. TV. It's going to be on there a bunch of times before the vote. And you're surely welcome to pin up anything you want to pin up around town. Thanks. You know? Okay. <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, I watched the debates on TV prior to coming here tonight on estate issues, number one, to be exact, and uh, there's a lot of misinformation there. Also, I read the article in the uh, Smart Shopper, and the way I read it, yes, Mr. Cashman is right, there's certain people, a lot of record means they had that lot surveyed, and it's a public record, and it's two acres or less, it's still grandfathered under the new uh, zoning laws. What about the lots that were put aside by the senior citizens of this community <coughs> saying that they had three or four lots at the two acres, and then when it became three acres, they didn't have two or three lots anymore. They only had one lot. What about them people that didn't have it surveyed? What about the people that lost that amount of land and that amount of revenue? This is what I think that article spoke about, not about lots of record. And I'm not defending Mr. Peterson. I'm just saying as a reader, that's what I read into it. Thank you. Any further comment? OK. Excuse me just a minute. Andrew, did you have something you want to say? Okay. Okay, we have announcements. Uh, Jennifer and Lorraine have been both called for Traverse Jury.
for no, uh, they're laughing at you. For November, I wouldn't want Lorraine on my my jury. I'll oh, tell you right now. To jury duty. No How way. does one get chosen? I've yeah, never yeah. gotten to do jury duty. I have a driver's license. I've had one for many years. <laughs> so they're chosen for uh, November and December. How this can mean feel? this can mean up to 15 days that they may be out of the office during that two month period. Duty starts on November 9th. How do you so think that would feel, Tony? To have Lorraine on your jury, mm. you wouldn't, wouldn't stand a chance. You wouldn't stand a chance. Uh, can I announce so, again about pies? Well, let me just say that this is, um, as I told Lorraine before, we'll work around it. There's nothing we can do about it anyway. But uh, we'll work around that, no problem. Well, all the cross training we've done, done, it'll work out. Yeah, we have fine. a lot of, everybody can fill in, absolutely. Okay, and you want to talk, we talked about pies last week and I you weren't here. I know, I wasn't here. And no one will make custard pies, uh, which is uh, an insult was... to me. I was advised against the custard pie by the ladies at the church, and I feel that as they have experience in freezing of pies, and I have never once frozen a pie, that I should trust them. Anyway, the announcement again is that um, we are looking pies. to make 30 pies to send out with the um, Thanksgiving baskets that the food pantry sends out, and anyone that is interested in donating cans of pumpkin or evaporated milk or bags of flour or sugar is encouraged to do so. And anyone that's interested in helping to bake those pies, please let me know. Um, you can reach me at extension 407 here at the town hall, or you can call me at home, 636-1124. And the question we had brought, that I brought up was how much of each, how much of each thing, thing are you looking for? So people, you know, might have 20 yep. people bringing in 10 pounds of flour and you'll... If 20 you know. people bring in 10 pounds of flour, that would be unfortunate if there was no one that brought in pumpkin or sugar to go with it. Um, we could make a heck of a lot of tortillas, and I make a fine tortilla, Mr. Lopez. Um, but what I will say is this, if we have surplus of any one ingredient, it will be donated to the food pantry to go someplace where it's needed. So how much do you need? Just how much do we need? Well, we need, we're doing, the plan is to do 15 pumpkin pies and 15 apple pies. So we need 15 cans of pumpkin. We need 15 cans of evaporated milk. We need um, the apples, I think I can probably swing. And as far as flour, I think for 30 pies, I, I feel that four or five pound bags of flour would be sufficient. Well, 20 pounds altogether. Well, but it, let's say four people each brought in a five pound bag of flour, that that would be sufficient. Um, and that um, probably two five pound bags of sugar would be sufficient. Right. And I am hoping to have these spices needed donated, and I will announce that next week if I get that lined up. Are you planning on doing the baking here? No. Uh, the school doesn't know this yet, really, but I'm actually hoping to um, have permission to use the school cafeteria, the, the school kitchen, to cook the pies. I think that they have a much better setup to do so. If that is not possible for some reason, then yes, I'm planning on baking them here. Mm, very good. And uh, good I idea. think that it will go well. So anyone that's interested in baking pies, I'm hoping to have it be a multi-generational event. I've got some school children that are interested in helping, not very little ones, older <laughs> school children that are interested in helping, um, and some adults as well, and any other adults that would like to join up would be very welcome indeed, and it should be a merry time had by all. The pies need to be available to the food pantry the third Wednesday of the month. Just for those who don't know, the food pantry is open every third Wednesday of the month from 10 until noon. Is this correct, Lorraine? I think that, yes. Okay, and donations are accepted, especially Wednesday morning, starting at 8. Um, so the, the pies need to be there then. I, my thought is that if we were to make them the third Monday of the month, or certainly no later than the second Thursday of the month, they need to be frozen. This is what I'm told, so that they are going to send them off as frozen pies, which also brings us to next. If you wish to donate, um, I've, I'm a big fan of the glass pie plate. I have a huge supply of them. It was my intention to send them all out in glass pie plates, but the food pantry assures me that I will never see them again, and so we need to send them out in aluminum pie plates. So that's another thing that can be donated. I scoped them out. I guess they come in packs of five, I think. So if people want to donate packs of aluminum pie plates, that's good too. How could you do that to the environment? I feel awful. I have I 30 pie plates I was ready to go with. I can't believe it. <laughs> but I was assured that people wouldn't return the glass pie plate and I would be sad. So, okay, anyway, moving on. Um, so they need to be frozen. So I'm hoping to do it the, second, the end of the second week of November or the beginning of the third week so that they can be fully frozen so they can go out on the Wednesday. And then I guess what happens 
is you defrost the pie and you bake it at home. I, I, I really, I'm being told by the ladies at the food pantry that this does in fact work, that you can freeze a pie and it will still be okay. So we're gonna trust and, and that's gonna be okay. They, they sell frozen pie, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust the freezer section, David. <laughs> it, it, you microwave them? Okay, you people in your oh, no. crazy habits, I just... <laughs> We don't That's own a microwave. Like I don't trust them. They seem very unwise. <laughs> but whatever you people want to do. Nuclear power is made news for that. Um, any you can't last... put an aluminum pie plate in a microwave, though, right? I mean, this is. No. Okay. See? Any last comments? Mr. Lopez. <laughs> I would like to make an announcement. Uh, this December coming up, uh, your esteemed president is going to be going to Copenhagen to sign uh, a treaty, and that treaty is for um, global warming, which there's many scientists that don't believe this is happening. Uh, but in that signing of that treaty, he will give sovereignty, the United States sovereignty will be signed away, and I ask everyone to please uh, email, write congressmen, senators, uh, the White House, Mr. Obama himself, to ask him to rethink his signature on this treaty. The first step has already passed now with the bill that he just signed here, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, as far as you know, how much money for the national defense and tied into that was the hate bill crime that went along with that, which I don't understand. We have laws against hate and crime already, but that was the first step. Uh, for the Copenhagen type of situation. Uh, I think it is, uh, and I've been wearing my flag pennants upside down here for a couple of months because I am in distress for this country. I don't believe that U.S. sovereignty should be given up for any, any United Nation, any one world type of situation. Please do write your congressmen, do write your senators, call the White House, uh, do whatever you can do to preserve the sovereignty of this country. Anybody have an opposing view that they like to say? I don't, but I would like to say the ones that can't get a hold of anybody down in Washington or in the state, feel free to contact Mr. Cogliandro. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it might be a good time to reannounce that um, Susan Collins' office will be here the 17th right. of November. So that might be a time if people wish to discuss national politics to do so. Not a problem. I have a copy of the entire treaty myself. Tony, if I just uh, turn that little bit over no, here. You okay. Yes, I can. You don't have to talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> just about, uh, as Larissa was mentioning, about the fruit baskets, for those of you who may not know, stop playing with my things. The um, food pantry every Thanksgiving gives out baskets to anyone in need. So if you know of any family that doesn't get these or that no needs a food basket, um, they have, the church has a, an in-giving of food, I think in two weeks, and they give uh, all of the other foods, the vegetables and things that need to go in, and the, the food pantry furnishes the turkey. And as Larissa says, the town is going to furnish the pies this year. And this is, uh, they're in the habit of giving out around 30 uh, Thanksgiving baskets, and they're really good things. But So if you do know someone that needs a food basket, just either contact the food pantry or contact me, and, and we'll get the, the word to them so that they can go and pick up a food basket. Or well, Mr. Colliano. Or Tony. Well, actually, we're... <laughs> And I will, a couple of weeks ago, I came in here very excited, as I am wont to do, um, with ideas about having the town give out food baskets. And for all of those of you that are connected with the food pantry and the church that have worked so many years on this already, I am so sorry for not checking with Lorraine first about what was already being done. I will learn eventually um, that I should check with the people that have been doing for many, many years before I charge forward with new things to do. So. I am sorry if I ruffled any feathers or stepped on any toes. It was all meant in good, I promise. It was fine with me, Melissa. Thank you. But all these people are using aluminum plates. It's shameful. Aluminum. It's awful. And paper plates. 
Okay. Motion accepted. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor.